I'm going to show you step by step exactly how I caught this trade yesterday on silver. Make sure you stick around to realize how I use gold in correlation with silver to be able to take this trade. I first had to do was determine what is my bias today? Am I going to be buying or am I going to be selling? Because I can only be thinking of doing one. So all I had to do for this, I had to go over to the higher time frames and see what has been happening recently. Now, what you can see is if I go on the weekly, we had a weekly support zone down here, which we tapped into last week and had a strong bounce off. If I go on the four hour, what you can see is that we rejected this very strongly. This was actually a head and shoulders pattern. As you can see, price was pushing down. We then created the final low. We then had a bullish leg. We created a higher high. This higher high did in fact break above there. So as you can see, price had now changed in direction and we were bullish. We had the pullback down to here. We created a higher low. And from that point, we had a strong, strong push to the upside. And that is where we found ourselves, which means our bias is only bullish because of this bullish price action that I've just shown you right here with higher highs, higher lows. And if I show you the previous daily candles, we're also very strong bullish. So we're only looking for upside. But what you will notice is that there hadn't been any bearish momentum at all yet. And these candles were starting to die out and get weaker. So we were expecting a pullback of sorts and hoping that they, this could come in Asian and London. And here is what happened. So the next four hour, Asian came down like this, Asian came down again, and then London, this is just before New York opened. All we're looking for is a higher low to be created from where we can catch a trade in US session. So it might be around there, it could be anywhere. We're looking to catch this higher low so we can get the next push to the upside. Now on the higher time frames, where is this zone likely going to be? Well, what you can see on the four hour here and on the daily, if I just show it more clearly, on the daily again now, you can see we had this zone right here, which was in fact September's high zone. We have now broken above September's high zone and this could be a potential possible pullback zone. Now, what I will also draw on is we have the psychological number of exactly 20. So I've tied it up a bit there and we now have this higher time frame zone, which we could get a potential pullback to and fill a bit of this range here which was the exact psychological zone of 20, which was also September's high zone. So now we know on the higher time frames that we're only looking for buys and we know a potential zone that we could pull back to. So now we can go over to the lower time frames. If you want details on exactly how I trade from seven years of experience, you can see that I have my bundle here, which is only 99 pounds, which is $112. But this offer won't be here for much longer. You can see it's all the courses I've made. It's the first link in the description. Now on my lower time frames, the black candles represent Asian session and the green candles represent London session and the red candles represent US session. So what you'll see is that on the day of this trade, Asian and London both pushed us down and gave us the pullback that we were looking for. And I've now stopped it just before US opened. So now we can start to think where is our entry zones that we could be getting entries from. To do that, all we've got to do is look left. What happened around this price point in US session the last time it traded around it? So you can see that on this day here, which was just two days before, there wasn't anything, it just broke straight above. So we can't take too much from that. That was the breakout session. But if I take the chart across here, what you'll start to notice is that we are creating US zones. So the next US zone down from where we currently are was this zone right here. So if I draw that on, and I will also show you that if you go to the left right here, so I've gone all the way left and you can see this zone was a clear zone from the past as well. So this is obviously a US zone, which we're looking for, which we could see a potential rejection of. There is a high chance of rejection at this zone. So if we drag this across, you'll also notice that this is the 20 zone right here. So we now have the perfect zone in which we're looking for a trade. Now, the behavior of the market in US session, what are we actually looking for the market to do? Well, all we're looking for is for price to push down in the wrong direction that we're looking for the trade. So it's pushing down as a fake out move. We're then looking for it to tap into this zone, reject, and then push harder off to the upside. This is exactly the plan that we are looking for when we came to this session. And this is what I was managed to catch. So if I play it out right here, you can see the price managed to range around for a bit, but then it did eventually come down at around three. 
So then this is where we got in buy stops just below there. And then the target was this zone up here, which was, as you can see, as a US zone from the two previous US sessions. I actually caught buys from this zone yesterday or the day before this trade. So I wasn't targeting past this point here. If I just draw this on as a zone right there, I wasn't targeting past there. And that is where I was going to take my trade out. So it's a very clean trade from here. If I just show this play out. But before there is one last thing before I actually took this trade that I had to make sure of. So I went over to gold and I thought, does gold back up what I'm saying or could it create any potential problems? Now, what you can see on gold is that we had this zone right here, which was from two US sessions ago. We had this zone right here. And what happened? Well, gold had now tapped into that zone. Obviously on gold, the higher time frame, the higher time frames are bullish as well. Now on gold, it tapped in and it had rejected and there was no upper wick yet. So gold was looking good to push off to the upside as well. And there wasn't looking like there was going to be any problems anytime soon. So gold supported the bias of this silver trade. So back over to the silver trade now. This is where I took it at. And then as you can see, price pushes off for the rest of the session. And then it does end up rejecting that zone up there. So this was a super clean trade and a complete breakdown of why I took it.